Hey guys, Graham from Paragon Performance here. Today we're in the dyno cell with our Shop Z06 and we are testing the Cook's headers. Now, we've seen some controversy online whether or not these headers truly make power or if they're gonna do anything on a C8 Z06. So today we're gonna do that testing. Now, as everyone knows with the C8Z06, the level of engineering on this car is beyond anything that we're used to. It's even way above and beyond the regular Stingray. GM has made sure that everything on this car is as perfect and makes as much power as possible. So in stock form, the headers are already tubular. This is not like the old LT1 C7 where you've got a log style manifold and doing a long tube header is a drastic difference. We're going from an already long tube design to a slightly longer tube, you know, slightly different collector design here. So we're not changing it in a big way, but we're interested to see if aftermarket headers designed a little bit differently can make a difference. So let's jump over and take a look at the numbers. And I also wanna talk a little bit about how these cars make their power, how they learn, and why some of that resetting the ECU, driving the car is important and what it all does. All right, so we did the testing on this car exactly how we always do. We get the room temperature consistent, we get the fluid temperatures in the car all consistent, and then we do some baseline runs to kind of get the car settled in, and then we establish a standard number that it's making for a given day, such as today. Then we change the part on the car, we don't do any resetting, we don't do any driving, because doing so can actually change the numbers on this car, and I'll explain why. We put the car back on the dyno with the new part, when we get back to the same room temperatures, same fluid temperatures, and we run it again through several runs till we establish a new pattern. Then we compare those results. So that's what I have pulled up here. So the baseline for this car today was 606 horsepower and 430 foot-pounds of torque. That falls right within what we normally see on these cars. We've seen them as low as 600. We've seen them as high as 612 to 615 on a completely stock baseline run. So that's a good that's a good number that tells me the car is in a good spot and happy with how it's running on the current 93 octane fuel that we have in it. Compared to when we put the cooks in there, uh, same peak horsepower, but more peak torque. Uh, nine foot pounds of torque peak gain over stock. And if we look through the power band, and the way I like to do this when we're comparing numbers, is I like to split the horsepower and the torque on separate graphs. You guys are probably used to seeing dyno graphs where torque and horsepower cross, they'll put them all on one graph. That can be nice for certain situations for me when I'm trying to compare and I wanna see where the torque is different and the horsepower is different. It makes it easier to compare it by doing this. So if we drag this down and just kind of focus on the horsepower, and remember that horsepower is the torque being spun out over RPMs. So if there's more torque, there's more horsepower. And if we look at areas like around 4,400 RPMs, you can see there's about seven horsepower gain in that area. Up here around 6,200 RPM, we've got a good jump in power, 508 up to 520 there. At other points here, we're about 10. So through the power band, there are gains of eight to 10 horsepower on average. So it does do something. It does actually improve over stock. Now again, we didn't expect it to be 20 or 30 horsepower like you might see on a car that has really cheap, you know, cast tubular style headers. And we're moving to a long tube. We're going from a good design to a slightly better design, but there is an improvement there with a good comparison test. And that's what we did here. So now I mentioned before that these cars are very sensitive. They do learn their power up and down. And if you are using poor octane fuel, you might see some very different numbers than this. If you've been driving your car very easy and there's a lot of carbon buildup, you might see some different numbers. Cooks actually recommends doing a few things to see these optimal gains. They recommend resetting the ECU and they recommend driving it for 100 miles, including some hard driving. Now, the reason behind that is when we reset the ECU in these cars, it resets any of the learning. If the power has learned down from its kind of starting reset point, it might help it learn back up if you have good fuel in it. But the opposite is true with these cars. Compared to the Stingrays, what we observe with the Stingrays is if we reset those ECUs, they start at the highest power and they'll learn down for lower octanes if they need to. The Z06 is different. It seems to start more in the middle, kind of assuming a medium grade octane, if you will. And if it has good fuel in it, it will learn the power up with more use. And as a test, 
we actually did reset the ECU after we did our baseline testing to see what the difference would be. And that's this extra run here I'm gonna show you where you can see we lost quite a bit of power. We went down to a peak horsepower of 600 and down to basically 432 on the torque, pretty similar to stock. And if I zoom in, you can see there's quite a few places in the power band where we've lost power. Now I'm logging it to see why we're doing that and the answer is simple, it's running less ignition timing. These cars have a full-time fuel control system, so the fueling is always on point, but the ECU varies the amount of ignition timing based on the learned octane. So if we reset it and we run it, we're gonna see a lower value until we do run after run after run, and it will slowly work its way back up to the higher values. So that's something to keep in mind when we're considering products on these cars. You know, if you just go to Joe Blow Dyno and you dyno it on one day when it's 50 degrees, and you put the headers on a couple months later and go back and dyno it again, you might not see numbers that make sense apples to apples. That's why it's important and that's why we do the testing this way. So hopefully that clears everything up for you guys, shows you guys what these headers do. It's certainly not nothing and it doesn't lose any horsepower anywhere, which is nice. So it can be a good bang for the buck to squeeze a little extra power out of a already pretty amazing Z06. So anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this video and as always, make sure you like and subscribe and we'll get you guys some more content soon. Yeah. <laughs>